I do it because I love the sport. I love competition. How much do you train a week? During preseason, around uh, 400 to 500 miles in a week. 500 miles a week. At 31 years of age, Harvey Nitz is the grand old man of American cycling. He rides for an amateur team funded by 7-Eleven. The team is training here in Austin, Texas. What's your ultimate goal? Ultimate goal? I want a gold medal at the Olympic Games. That's the reason why I'm coming back four years later. After getting the silver and bronze medal in 84, that was the thrill of a lifetime. A dream come true. What's the difference between you, though, Harvey Nitz, and the Russian cyclists you're competing against? What's the difference between me and the Russians? I do it because I love the sport. I love competition. And I'm sure for most of the Russians, it's probably just a way of getting out of getting a better life. There was a time trial here two years ago, and every team crashed in that corner. Basically, the only teams that didn't go down were the three, three pro teams, basically. All, every single amateur team cracked. I was just talking about crashing on this road. <laughs> you okay? My front wheel just, just went out. Crashes like this are an almost everyday occurrence for racers. With only bruises and abrasions, the 7-Eleven team is back on the road. And if you ask most of the national team how they got into bike racing, most of the time it's by some, some weird fluke or something. It's really funny. It's a lot of people are crossovers from other sports like running or skiing. 19-year-old Scott McKinley is one of the hottest prospects in cycling today. But like his teammates, his training is much looser than the highly structured Soviet and East German programs. Oh yeah, it is hit and miss. It is, that's all it is. I train according to how I feel day to day. So that probably does hinder me. But I don't like to worry about it. Very soon it will be bike race time. 40 laps for the men. We need to have one marshal in the... Cyclists, uh, please clear the course. One, two, Perfect! Today's race is the Spawn Cardiac Classic. Riders ready? We're underway! One will try to break away off the top of the Richard Fuhrer. Looks like we have everybody back together. Look up! Why should he move up now? Because when he on the back, it's uh, very dangerous. He cannot control the race. His name is Eddie Boroshevitz, but everyone calls him Eddie Bay. For 10 years, he was the United States Olympic cycling coach. Are the American athletes as good as the East Bloc athletes, the East Athletes Germans, is the, the better. Athletes, uh, American people is very athletic. That's wonderful. And very good country, very clean country, very good economy, so it's good food. If we have better athletes than these Germans and the Russians, if we have more money, better nutrition, why aren't we better team? We don't have it. The problem is, we have a professional athletes, we have amateur coaches in this country, and we have to change. That is what is different between East and West. We got Scott McKinley along with wider number 70. Earlier this year, Eddie B. resigned as head coach of the U.S. Olympic team. What happened? Why aren't you still coach? Too many things. Coaching is not priority, you know, in our federation. I don't believe it, okay? He isn't coach right now because really over the last 10 years, Eddie had to go from a one-man show, no staff, no nothing, and run everything himself. And cycling went from 6,000 people to now, I bet this year we're going to have 35,000. Richard DeGarmo was president of the U.S. Cycling Federation. Like all other Olympic sports, cycling is governed by a frequently changing board of volunteers. But athletes say these volunteers have no consistent long-term view of the sport, that they're more interested in their own position on the board than they are in the team. There is a lot of politics in, in the Cycling Federation, in every sports federation. That's true because these are amateurs, and the only thing they have is a stroke on their ego. And your race leader, John Fry, Scott McKinley.
The 7-Eleven team took the first four places in the race. Scott McKinley finished second. Harvey Nitz was back in the pack. But the race has no bearing on who goes to Korea. That will be decided at the Olympic cycling trials in July.